it's the real estate show we've come to sell dr am i still on Estate show. We're gonna hit North American real estate and what's going on down in the Dominican Republic and why you should invest here. Welcome aboard. And always a big thank you to Jay Beatty and the crew for both of those intro musical bits. Thanks, Beatty. You're the man. Today, we're going to hit a little bit about local market in, well, the North American real estate market. It's not so local. Local and local like a pesa. But you're seeing some of the same signs clear across the board in North America. So we're going to hit that, and then we're going to hit the contrast between North American real estate prices and the market activity versus what is going on down in Dominican Republic. The North American market has apparently seen its peak. (laughs) And we wondered how high it could go, and we all were saying, when's it going to stop? When's it going to crash? When is there going to be a huge market correction? Like, we're always expecting one. And when the light switch gets flicked, it's over. And I think we've reached it's over right now. So we're seeing inflation, the cost of living going up. We're seeing interest rates rising. Man, entertainment costs are unbelievable now. How much does it cost you to go out for uh, 20 20 wings and a couple beers with a couple buddies? 100 bucks? It's getting crazy out there. We're going to hit some of the factors that are involved in the market correction that we're seeing right now, quickly as it's come. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Dominican Republic, some pricing down here, and some reasons about why you should come down here and why you should take a little piece of your equity, some of your equity, and diversify and come to a very stable market without the peaks and valleys. So it's going to be a quick hitter today. Nothing but real estate and Dominican Republic information here on the Real Estate Show. And below in the show description, you will see the links for some of the things we're going to go through here. I'm not going to spend too much time reading every article, but this one's pretty interesting because because it um, compares some of the major markets to uh, Southern Ontario. BMO says froth is coming out of Canadian housing market with interest rates on the rise. A frothy market exists when the value of an asset becomes inflated or overvalued. This condition could lead to a bubble that eventually bursts, bringing the house down. Robert Kavik, a senior economist, Economist, economist with BMO says the Canadian housing market has been frothy. However, with interest rates in the rise, Cavkick, Cavkick sees some of the fizz starting to disappear. Froth is coming out of the home prices. 
just as it is across a number of other asset classes that were boosted by excessively stimulative policy. He wrote in a post on May 20th. So, I mean, I don't need to tell you, unless you haven't been paying attention at all, that there's a correction coming. And I know that the true real estate investors buy and hold. They're in it for the long journey. They're not looking to cash out when the market's high. But on the other hand, if you don't have a whole lot of real estate holdings or you have some equity that's just sitting there, why not take a piece of it and put it into a more stable market? And I mean, I'm sitting right here on the North Shore of Dominican Republic in a town called Sasua, where you can buy a one bedroom condo for 60,000 US. Two bedrooms, 80,000. You can buy a one bedroom in a beachfront gated community, and I mean on the ocean for a hundred. <laughs> you put a hundred down here and it rents for thousand, twelve hundred a month. You can see some serious return on your money. So if you're a pensioner and you're 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 counting on your pension to get you through life, here's something that might add to your income, quite definitely. Quit judging people who bought houses at the peak of the real estate market and overpaid. <laughs> Yes, let's try to stop that. <laughs> Bidding war no more. How to make an offer in Canada's cooling housing market. Buyers are, you know, are feeling a little bit more comfortable now. This is interesting. How real estate investors and speculators help trigger the onslaught of r soaring interest rates. How, how about soaring prices? What triggered the soaring prices? Maybe illegal offshore money that we don't keep track of oh, don't get political post haste housing affordability suffers worst worst decline since 1994 we're feeling it rents are through the roof bank of canada's rate hike comes as no surprise for bc real estate you know it is a you know, no don't go there it's political again jeez Rate hikes are cooling. This is from the Toronto Star. Cooling Toronto's real estate market. But some home buyers feel the chill more than others. Well, who might that be? Worry. Buyer's remorse high as real estate market slow down. The real estate market slow down materializes. So this is just a good indication of what's happening in North America that we've been calling for for a long time. We knew it was going to end at some point. And many indicators in North America are pointing to a serious correction. We've got everything that is in place for a serious correction where we normally feel it. And this, this one might be a little bit uh, more painful than we're used to. Okay, now we're getting on to some Dominican Republic. Th this post is made by Casa Linda. Again, the links will be in the show description wherever you're watching this. And please help out the algos, uh, especially for the new channels, Buying Dominican Republic on YouTube and at Buying Dominican on Twitter. We're broadcasting live there. I don't do that often because I like my bigger accounts where I get more action. But uh, we're building these, so we're broadcasting this live on both channels. Casa Linda wrote this post, thinking of moving to the Dominican Republic permanently. Here's what you need to know. And I'm not going to claim to be the expert. I've only been here seven months. But let me tell you what I've grown to know. True. Grown to know? True. <laughs> Jeez. I need a drink. I'm recording this at 11.12 in the morning because... It's going to be hot as Haiti in here at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, when I usually do, this is Thursday morning, when I usually do the Jim Fannin show. So I'm pre-taping this, and you know my guest today was Eric Matheny. He um, had to reschedule. So Eric will be on next week, next Thursday, on the Jim Fannin show at 8 p.m. Eastern. So we already talked about the North American market. It looks like it's seen its peak. And DR 
is stable and rising. So a couple things about uh, DR prices. So when the crash came in 2008, they were flat. They didn't get beat up. They stayed flat for almost 10 years. <laughs> and then in 2018, it started to rise until COVID hit, and then they went flat again. So it looks like the worst punishment you can get in the Dominican Republic right now with a brisk market and rising real estate prices that we're in right now, and we see evidence of people being able to buy, improve, and flip, and make some money, just like you could in the North American market before it went crazy. Um, it'll take you some time to adjust to the pricing down here because it's much, much cheaper. Cost of living's cheaper. Real estate prices are cheaper. Fuel's cheaper, for crying out loud. I've been here seven months, and gasoline prices have risen 20 cents a gallon in seven months. What have you done? What have you felt in the last seven months where you're living? And we're seeing um, inflation, cost of living hurting you in North America. Ma mortgage rates are on the, on the rise. Bank interest rates are nominal. I mean, that, doesn't, that hasn't changed forever. And, uh, yeah, it's costing you a lot more just to go out for entertainment, go to the movies, get a bucket of beer and some wings. <laughs> We've got a place down the street that gives uh, Fridays 50 wings, 1,000 pesos. That's basically 20 bucks. 50 wings, 20 bucks. Yeah, it's uh, crazy, crazy Ranch. Yeah, Crazy Ranch. And for the purposes of this broadcast, all prices are USD, American dollars. So when you first come to Dominican Republic, as soon as you land here, you get the same rights as a nationalized citizen does. And actually applying for citizenship, if you'd like to do that, is possible as well. You can enjoy 100% ownership in any property that you purchase. You don't need to get out of the country after 90 days, like some places like Mexico. Mexico, you can't own 50% of a property. You can only own 49% own of, a, of a property from what I understand, and um, a national's gotta own the other part. So, Dominican has much less in the way of restrictions. One, on how long you stay. Two, there's virtually no real estate taxes here unless you're over a certain price point. We'll get into that later maybe. And there's not significant income taxes to speak of down here. In fact, you can apply for a 10-year waiver or deferral of property taxes and income taxes on the property that you're renting out. So... It's your business whether you want to report the income to your, your native country's government. But down here, man, there's just very little restrictions. There's no restrictions on how long you can stay. I know many expats down here that have been here 20 years and never applied for citizenship. So you don't have to leave every three months like you do in other places. Uh, currency exchange and import is quite easy. Business regulations are, well, there are none. You don't need a liquor license to sell booze. You don't need a health license to sell food. You don't have regular spot checks of the authorities coming by to check you out, unless they're the police, and then that's a whole different story. But pr pretty much you are able to do whatever you want down here now. If you're employing Dominican Republican, if you're, if you're employing Dominicans, Dominican Republic nationals, then good for you. If you're opening a business that takes jobs away from Dominicans, probably they're not looking so kindly on the gringo that's taking jobs from the natives. But you don't see that very much. I mean, most people are coming down here, they're getting into the restaurant business or the bar business or the rental housing market, the Airbnb business. So I guess with all that said, you know, my question to you is why not diversify a little bit? I mean, if you're completely divested in the stock market, don't you think maybe you should put a little money into gold and silver? I don't know. I'm not, a, I don't, I don't gamble. I don't play the stock market. But in terms of real estate equity, why not take a piece of it? 
and put it somewhere stable that will give you a good return on your money, especially if you're setting yourself up for retirement. Down here, you can put $100,000 into a property that you know will pay you $1,200 a month, American. So the cash on cash investment is very lucrative down here. And then if you look at commercial properties or even boutique motels or something like that, you can get in at a really good price and generate some good cash flow. And if you're looking for a part-time job or you want to run a business or you're looking to manage a hotel, you're all set up. And virtually, there's no lag time to getting set up. If it's turnkey, you walk into the business, you throw open your doors, you get a couple real estate um, managers, you know, Airbnb guys, uh, even the websites work well, and you're in business that week. You get, you know, it's, there's some long-term tenants and there's some high turnover tenants. So you can go by the day, by the week, by the month, by the year down here as far as what type of tenants you're looking for. Down here, they call them renters. Why do I hear renters so much all the time? Aren't they just tenants? Here's the other thing. When you invest in the Dominican Republic, nobody can touch you. If you have an American account in the DR, you don't have to worry about your Canadian government going out and going in and freezing your account or taking a peek around. It'll be there and no one can touch your Dominican assets. No one's gonna come from your home country and, and put the touch on you for either the income you're earning off of it or the increase in your equity when you go to sell it. So, you know, I was speaking to a fellow realtor the other day, and he says, you know, I tell people to come down, put 100000 into a property. It'll get you 1000 to 1200 a month rent, depending on whatever, and just let the money sit, put it in the bank and just let it sit. In no time, that thing's paid off. Well, 100000 at 1000 a month, <laughs> You can figure out how, how many months, you know, 100 months, and you're paid off. <laughs> there are options to finance down here, and sometimes you can find owner financing with the right down payment. So if you're looking to leverage, great idea. Maybe you don't want to put all your money into it. Maybe you want to finance some, of, uh, or, some or a majority of it. That is possible. You can look into, what do we got down here? Scotiabank is down here. And apparently they use the same uh, metrics to qualify in Canada as they would down here, except the rates aren't as good as they are at home right now. They're a little bit higher. But you can get a private VTB realistically for 5% over three years and amortized in a 20-year AM. So you don't have to worry about the income tax paying income tax on the money that's coming in. You can just let it sit there and accumulate if you want, or you can take it back to wherever you're living. But then you also have a vacation rental to come to. You have a property that you can occupy when it's vacant, so you can get away anytime you want. And Dominican Republic is a really easy country to travel to. When I came down here, there was no, well, I came down in October of 2021, and I didn't get asked for a vax pass. I didn't get, like, no, like, bring a passport, okay? You'll need a current passport. But most of the time, like, the search is coming into the, pro into the country. We're in, they didn't even look in my bags. Of course, I'm in a suit and tie when I land. So sometimes I feel like that just gets me waved through. So we've got a diverse um, number of communities on the north coast here. I'm in Sasua right now. That's kind of a tourist haven. You will see some uh, lots of rentals in Sasua, lots of nightlife, and a few all-inclusive resorts. So, and then you've down down the road to the east. The number five goes all the way along the north coast. You'll see communities like uh, Cabarete, which uh, contains Kite Beach which is huge for kite surfers. And we've actually got a property listed, the Kite Beach Inn for 2.99 million, right on the beach, 28 rooms. All cash business too. And then further east to that, you've got Las Terrenos and Samana, where you can watch the whales in Samana anyways. 
um, for a couple months, or maybe a month of the year. I think it's in February, maybe March, maybe overlapping. The whales come to breed in the little bay there, Salmon Bay. That is a really nice community too. And everyone has a different, every community has a different vibe. So, but it doesn't matter where you go on the North Coast, there's good opportunities for flip, for flips. And there's gold among those average sellers that are just like anyone else that is in the real estate market. They're trying to get as much as they can for the property, whether it's worth or not. Or not. But you can still find some gold. You can still find some opportunities where owner financing exists and people want to get out now and they're priced really well, i.e., the Sunset Beacher, which is a 17-room hotel down in the heart of the resort district. And, uh, yeah, he wants 800000 Get this. There's 10 titles. So you can sell off 10 condos once you get in there. And that'll give you your complete investment back. The cost of living down here in Dominican Republic is really, really cheap. Gasoline right now is going for $5 a gallon. It has not, it's only gone up by 20 pesos since I've been here for seven months. Let me show you a couple different links. <laughs> Foreign travel advice, this is out of the UK government. Uh, food prices down here are incredibly cheap. I can get, let's see, Two pieces of breaded fried chicken with moro, moro, is brown rice and beans, and a little salad for 150 pesos. It's $3. That's a good lunch. Three bucks. So the local food down here is cheap. Now you do have the tourist traps that are going to charge you a little bit more money and a tax when you go in because some of the big change charge, I think it's 28% tax. 10 is supposed to be for a tip. And 20, 18% is for, I don't know, some sort of tourist tax of sorts. But the little mom and pop shops, they don't charge tax. Lilo Chicken is down the street from me. And I get six pieces of chicken and a large macaroni salad delivered to my condo for 400 pesos. And I always give them a little tip to give to the girls back at the... At the um, I want to call it a restaurant, but it's a roadside kitchen, basically. So f the food prices are really, really inexpensive here. You can eat very uh, cheaply. And, you know, I haven't seen the store shelves getting cleaned out since I've been here. You've got tons of fresh fish, fruits, produce. And the other thing is, like, labor down here is super, super cheap. So if you're doing renovations on some of these buildings or real estate or anything that you need done, even bike, uh, somebody blew their engine the other day and it cost them $1,000 American to, to put a brand new engine in it. <laughs> a thousand American? Like, I don't know how much it costs you to change an engine in Canada. It's got to be 3,500 bucks, maybe, maybe more. I don't know. So yeah, lots of inexpensive fresh fish. You can buy it straight from the fishermen on every morning when they come off the boats. Coconuts and pineapples and all kinds of local fruits, mangoes, bananas. I mean, it's super, super cheap because they're local. So yes, in the grocery stores, you're gonna pay a little bit more for your haagen dazs that comes in from the United States. Anything imported is gonna cost you a little bit more money. Transportation costs down here are unbelievable. They're cheap. Not only is gas very decently priced, but you can get a guagua that goes from here to Los Serenos basically for, I don't know, 100 pesos. You can go from here to Porta Plata for 50. <laughs> you can take the shared taxi. And then there's motos too, as you can hear in the background. You can get a moto to take you down the street for 50 pesos, take you anywhere you want in the city for 50 pesos, 100 pesos at night, or to go pick up whatever you need. If you need 10 beers, a dozen beers, there's a moto right down at the bottom of your building or at the top of your street. You just say, here, 
You give them a thousand pesos and they come back with a with a twelve pack for you. Beer is pretty expensive down here. Yeah, a thousand pesos, twenty bucks will get you about a twelve pack. But if you're drinking rum, on the other hand, well, that's a different story. That is just chippy chippy. So you've got the guagua, and you got the motos, and you got shared taxis. And even if you take a, like a air conditioned coach, if you're going from here to Los Terrenos, it's about four hours. It's like eight dollars, four hundred pesos, <laughs> to go all the way down the north coast. And just to dispel some myths, there's no hurricanes basically here in the north coast. Haiti does get hit by hurricanes once in a while because they're exposed. But right here, we have a reef and we have mountains that carves the hell out of hurricanes when they come up. So they go around us or they get beat up and, cr- and, and cut up when they come over the land or over, over the, the mountains or what have you. So you don't have to worry even about hurricane season all that much in Dominican Republic. There's basically no sharks on the North Coast. There's actually nothing that is going to kill you here. I don't think you have to worry even about jellyfish, stingrays, sharks, barracudas. Like, there are very few shark sightings, let alone, you know, deaths here in Dominican Republic. At least on the North Coast. It might be a little different on the South Coast. I can't speak to what the shark... Uh, populations like on the south coast it might be a little higher but for the most part Dominican Republic's really safe with that stuff you can swim in the ocean anytime and feel safe and then you get the real estate prices real estate prices are unbelievably cheap you can get into a brand new build right here at Casa Linda for about 220,000 bucks you get a two bedroom two bath brand new in ground pool for crying out loud, you can get the improvement of the dormer on the living room and get it furnished for 250 And you can get terms on that too. So in phase 12, which is Casa Linda's new uh, phase, uh, 25000 holds your lot until January when they break ground. Then you need 35% down less than 25000 Then it delivers, and then there's a couple other payments in between. Before you close on it, you do a final inspection. Then... You transfer the last 10%, you take possession in July of next year. And it's in a brand new gated community. Construction will be done in two years tops. It's selling out fast. If there's even a lot left, they, they, they released 88 lots about a month ago. And if there's one left, I'd be surprised. But touch me up if you're interested. We'll hook you up. So don't be afraid. There's not much that's going to kill you down here. There's not poisonous snakes to be, unless you live in the jungle. There's like oh, nothing that's going to hunt you as a human being. And healthcare down here, I mean, despite what you might have, have heard, I haven't experienced it firsthand, but healthcare is pretty good down here. And it's reasonable. If you want coverage, it'll cost you 1500 a month or 1500 a year, sorry. Tops. Now, there are different plans. I was on a plan when I first came down here. It was basically 60 bucks a month, and that was like the top, the top health care package. So health care is something that you don't have to be all that concerned about. Crime rates, I think, are overstated. I mean, so much of what you hear about the crime down here is urban legend. I mean, you're hearing about decade-old murders of tourists that had, you know, were killed suspiciously in their resort and stuff like that. I mean, it's just that you don't hear that stuff down here. Now, if you're taking young girls around and doing things you shouldn't be doing, you, you better look out. Like, that is one thing that is not tolerated on this island because the natives will take care of it. And I don't even need to get into... My American friend sent me a picture the other day, or sorry, a video the other day, and the description made me not click it because it it sounded so gross, but it was basically some local guys getting correct on on a petter. So I would not recommend playing that game. So real estate prices are good, and the rental prices are solid because this is a, this is a rental 
town. It's a rental. It's an island of heavy rentals, vacation rentals, and the prices are decent. And if you have a decent product, you will get returns. And if you have a decent product, you will get good, good rates. So we touched on the crime. I think mostly it's petty crime down here. Unless you consider prostitution and drug dealing <laughs> like a serious crime, then there's it's only small crimes, it seems like. Petty crimes. Pit pockets, you know. You just got to have your head on a swivel just like anywhere else. But you know what? I haven't experienced a crime wave down here. And comparing it to back home, with so many people's houses that are on ravines or train tracks with easy getaways being the tar- like endless targets to home invasions. I don't know. I don't hear about home invasions down here. Again, I've only been here seven months, so I only have a limited kind of window into my knowledge here. But from what I see, I walk the streets at all times of day and night down the back roads, downtown, all over the place. And I'm talking like all times of night, and I've never felt unsafe once. You know what else you don't see is drug addicts and homelessness. I mean, maybe it's because the weather's so, you know, accommodating here that they are, what are they, just in the jungles or the mountains or something? Because, like, you just don't see addicts and homelessness, homelessness littering the street and... You don't see the mental health concerns that you see in North America either. And you know what else you don't see? Drug addicts. There's no opioids down here. People are not dying. I think, what would they say? So 5,000 people died in Canada last year of opioid overdose? There's, you can't get opioids down here. I mean, you can get anything if you pay. But that's one thing that just doesn't exist down here. If you want perks, if you're coming down here and you use perks to manage pain, bring them with you and bring lots because you will not find them down here. Ibuprofen, no problem. If you're in the hospital, yes, you can get the painkillers, but once you're out, that stuff's done. (sighs) Links are in the show description below buying Dominican Republic at gmail.com I think is the address but if that's not it then it is in the show description below and I thought I had some more oh yeah there's some more link oh, I already went through these links my bad it's getting pretty warm in here so this is 11:35 and here's the embassy of Canada to the Dominican Republic so here's the bottom line cash out a portion of your equity in the North American real estate market, call me, 809-330-8926. I'm on WhatsApp. You text direct or call me direct, 809-330-8926. My name is James Melville Fannin. You can call me whatever you want. (laughs) Just don't call me Jim if you're my friend. (laughs) My friends don't call me Jim. And then once you get in contact with me, we will put you in connection with all the people that you need to talk to to make things right and easy for you to navigate immigration to the Dominican Republic. I'd highly recommend it. Listen, there's no freer place in the world. And now that my friends are going back to Canada and communicating with me, they're reminding me you're not missing anything here. I just went out for pizza and wings with my wife. It cost me $65 for two beers and 20 wings. What? (sighs) Experience the freedom of Dominican Republic. Cash out a little bit of your equity and put it in a market that's stable, that doesn't suffer the peaks and valleys, and where a small investment can give you a really nice return on your money. Peace, love, hug your neighbor, and whatever you do, invest in Dominican Republic. I am out.